Hi, I'm Gary Lanier. Welcome to Boss Tone Video. We're at Center Staging in Los Angeles, California at the Boss A&R office. And today we have a very special guest, Mr. Paul Sidoti. Hi, Paul. Good, good to be here. Thanks, Gary. Thank you. Thanks for coming out. I know you're on tour doing some shows right now in LA. Yes. Uh, thanks for taking time and stopping by. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Paul, you started uh, music at a young age. Yeah. How did that happen? Well, I was uh, about three years old and I had a plastic guitar and, and uh, was walking around the house with it like any young kid would and strumming along to uh, Elton John, Saturday Night's All Right for Fighting. And my mom saw me playing the rhythm during the, the big breakdown in the middle and uh, she's like, wow, he's got, I think he's got an ear for this. It wasn't until a couple years later, though, that my hands were big enough to get around a guitar, so she took me into a, a music store and said, you know, his, are his hands big enough to play? And they picked up a guitar, put it in my hands, and they said, yeah, let's give it a shot. And, and here I am, all these years later, started, started at the age of five. Okay. Yeah. Wow, five years old. Five years old. That's amazing. Yeah. Well, so, so fast forward to now, you're an accomplished guitar player. Uh, you tour all over the, all over the world. Um, but you're also a multi-instrumentalist. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about that. Uh, well, I started on guitar, and uh, about the age of 12, uh, like most kids going into junior high and high school, I, I picked up the saxophone, and I played that in concert and marching bands and symphonic bands. And about the age of 15, I got really interested in piano, and I just was self-taught. I took whatever I learned on guitar, found middle C on a keyboard, and just started applying that to uh, all the knowledge that I obtained taking guitar lessons. And uh, one of my biggest inspirations was David Foster, and he was the guy that really, uh, that I listened to that I got most of my inspiration from. Yeah. You've mentioned Kiss, the Eagles, Van Halen, and the Beatles as some of your musical influences. Uh, rock seems to be the common thread there. Absolutely. How did you get involved with country music? Well, uh, I moved to Nashville in the fall of 2000. And it wasn't until 2007 that uh, I started meeting some players around town that were like, I would say borderline country rock players. But uh, one of them in particular helped me get like my first real, like sort of like pseudo country, uh, you know, pedal board amp combination in place. And prior to that, I had always played through a 412, you know, you know, stack and uh, with like a little Boss ME6 unit as my like delay boost pedal sort of uh, multi-effect unit and when I got to Nashville I realized there was guys that had all these stomp boxes on their pedal boards and were doing all these kind of dances for, it looked like to me from a, com a completely different background and, but he explained to me like how most of the players worked and uh, and as far as getting in the country I never really uh, went down there saying I want to be a, a country artist or I want to be playing country music. It just so happened that this opportunity came up and I was, you know, lucky enough to get the call to audition and and that's uh, how I ended up getting the gig. All right, Paul. Let's talk a little bit about gear. You have a really long list of Roland and Boss products that you currently use and have used live and in the studio. Um, let's start off with Boss pedals. Uh, tell us a little bit about. Uh, those products that you're using? When I first started uh, using Boss products, they were, it was great because they were inexpensive uh, for a starting guitar player. And uh, you were able to put together a really nice palette of sounds. And I, I've always used the overdrive distortion, uh, the compressor, sustainer, uh, super chorus, the digital delay, and EQ, a noise suppressor, uh, just about every pedal you could probably put on a pedal board I've, I've used uh, were Boss products. Now, you also have a Roland GR55 guitar synth. Mm -hmm. How do you use that? I use that primarily in the studio uh, to create different sounds. Uh, what's nice about that is with the, the, the Strat uh, guitar that it comes equipped with, it's, it tracks so nice and it, it doesn't feel like you're playing a actual you know guitar synth these are so uh, accurate and easy to play and uh, what's nice is that you also have a full palette of like the boss stomp boxes as well that are in uh, in the guitar synth but it, there's such cool sounds I mean ranging from pianos to flutes to 
bra like full on brass sections, which are really cool. And you use a, a Roland uh, GC1 V guitar Stratocaster to control the GR50. Correct. Is that yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's a it's a Roland Fender Strat. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It works out nice. It sure does. And that that's what's cool too is you can blend the two. If you want to play a gig with it, you could still have all your regular guitar sounds in it, and then switch into a, a synth sound if you wanted as well. That is handy. The V, the v guitar Strats, um, like you said, um, they're 100% Stratocasters mm -hmm. and also 100% V guitars. And great guitars as well. Like it's a it's a comfortable guitar. I feel comfortable playing at any gig. I also noticed that you've made. Um, a lot of music with rolling keyboards in the studio. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. It goes back to when I was uh, 15 years old and my parents took out a loan for a Roland J JX8P. Uh, that was my first synth. And uh, I, I fell in love with the sounds instantly because they had a big, fat analog sound to them. And I also got into programming when I was real little too. I, I didn't really read manuals, I just started turning knobs and I had the PG-800 that went with it and I would just start to create my own sounds and, and then uh, started to learn how to program since. And then uh, after that I purchased a, a D50 and a JD-800, uh, the MKS-20 piano modules and the P330s. And uh, they just, they always came out with like the cool sounds to me. You know, they, they, they were bright enough to be sort of digital, but I always came back to like the warm pad sounds, the warm string sounds that were uh, really signature Roland stuff. Paul, before we close, uh, what would you say to the guitar players out there that aspire to making a living in music? Just uh, practice, work hard, um, never be afraid to say no to a gig. You, know, you never know where it's going to lead. I found that to be the case with me. It's just you know, being in the right place at the right time. I would say in, in today's world, with social media and stuff, you can get your music heard a lot easier. Just do what, you know, is, is right for you, whatever works for you. Some guys just like to play in a coffee house, some aspire to be on the big stage, but always just follow your gut instinct and, uh, and just try your best. Well, Paul, thank you again for making time, coming out and talking with us today. And uh, I'm sure we'll see you soon. Absolutely. Thank Thanks a lot for much. having me. All right.